This is MRN Crew Call, brought to you by Hercules Tires. One of the things I love and respect about the NASCAR garage is the smart people in there. And yes, I, I understand there's a lot of smart people in there. And when you find a smart person who can explain things or a not so smart radio guy can figure out, that person is a gem. And that is who we're going to talk to today here on Crew Call. Kevin Kidd, the director of competition for Roush Fenway Racing. He can explain things in a way that even I can understand. And yes, he is one of those smart guys. I'm Steve Post, pit road reporter for Motor Racing Network. And this is Crew Call presented by Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Kevin is with Roush Fenway Racing. He's been there since 2015. Prior to that, he had a stint at Joe Gibbs Racing, crew chief on the Xfinity Series where he was a four-time winner. Prior to that, Spent some time at DEI and Everham Motorsports. And yeah, prior to that, he was an engineering student at Virginia Tech, up at uh, Virginia Tech University in Blacksburg, Virginia. He's from Tazewell, Virginia. His family runs a tire store and business up there. He is a 1997 graduate of the Tazewell High School Hall of Fame. And because of his success at NASCAR, he is a member of the Tazewell High School Hall of Fame. It's going to be great to hang out and talk with Kevin Kidd here on Crew Call on Motor Racing Network. Citywide to countryside, whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there no matter where the road takes you. Go to HerculesTires.com. There you can find the nearest authorized Hercules retail location to you. Plus, you can use the tire tracker to find out which Hercules tire fits your vehicle the best. That's HerculesTires.com. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Crew Call presented by Hercules Tires continues on here on the Motor Racing Network. So glad that you have joined us and so glad joining us via Zoom call. The Director of Competition for Roush Fenway Racing, Kevin Kidd, is on the line. Hello, Kevin. Welcome into Crew Call. Yeah, thanks uh, Thanks for having me. It's uh, It's been a pleasure. I think it's the first time I've done it, so glad to be here. Yeah, no, it is. We chat occasionally in the garage area, and that's really what Crew Call is, to share some of those conversations when we're sitting at the back of the hauler, back when we used to be able to do it. And now we can, I don't know. I don't even know if we can do that anymore, but uh, <laughs> I appreciate the time, that's for sure. And uh, always enjoyed our conversations. Kevin, when we look at um, where we're at, what, what from the competition level, Roush Fenway Racing, what's, uh, what's kind of the state of the company at this point? Yeah, you know... <clears throat> Uh, probably glass half full or better, uh, for sure. Um, I think, you know, when we looked at the last few years, we've kind of been on a little bit of a, a roller coaster where you think you get some momentum and you think things are going well. And then, you know, COVID hits or, or, you know, a lot of things change and, and then you kind of lose that momentum. And, uh, you know, 2020 was just, to be frank, it was a disaster of a season. We didn't run well at all. And, we were really disappointed with our efforts. And so we put a, a lot of energy uh, into just making our cars faster over the winter and uh, had a lot of good people uh, throughout the company uh, that, that just kind of doubled down and, and uh, came up with some new ideas and new things to try. And, and uh, I do think we made some improvements uh, overall to the, to the speed of our race cars and, and uh, that ultimately uh, makes improvements to the health of the company. And so, um, you know, as it sits right now, we're, we're you know, reasonably pleased uh, having um, uh, Chris in, in the playoffs right now on points and um, we're, you know, still trying to, to gain points and, and do all the things we can there with Newman to uh, get him a little further forward and ultimately, you know, I think uh, uh, we're still, you know, chasing the win to try to get in the playoffs. That's, uh, that's the easy way to do it and, uh, and that's the way we prefer to do it. So. Uh, we're going to keep chasing wins every week here. How are you with patience? Because you, you started this project. You moved to Roush Fenway Racing in 2015. And, and you're right. This sport is just so topsy-turvy. Throw a worldwide pandemic in the middle of it as well. Um, how good are you just personally with the, the patience of, of maneuvering this big ship in the right direction? I mean, I'm probably guilty of having too much patience. Um, uh, I've, I've been accused of that over the years. And, and, uh, the reality is, you know, when I came to the company, it was um, it was in a pretty big hole, um, and and there was a lot of philosophical changes uh, in the industry that 
uh, other teams had had kind of grabbed hold of and and were working down a path pretty fiercely and um in this you know Roush Fenway we we just weren't simply there and uh and like you say it's a it's a big ship that you're trying to point into a different direction in the ocean and um it's it's not easy um yet I do think we've made progress I I feel good about uh, many things that we've done um to, to improve our company and and improve our performance but uh by no means is the job over with we, we've still got a lot of a lot of work to do yeah, I, I uh, understand that. I think when I look back at the beginning of this year, Homestead Miami Speedway, Chris Busher, um, that run down there, very, very solid. D didn't get the win you wanted. Didn't, I mean, you're right, the job is still there. But moments like that where you see speed in a race car on an intermediate track, which is so important as well, how big are moments like that as you continue this battle? They're huge. I mean, it's a confidence builder for really the whole program, um, you know, folks who have worked at this with me, you know, over the years, um, you know, over time, you know, when you, when you get those little moments where you see the speed, it, it's, it's a reinforcement of the things you're doing. Um, it's a reinforcement of the direction you're going. Um, those things are important uh, as you try to uh, stack those pennies along the way and, and, and uh, you know, build, build into a stronger, faster company um, you got to see those moments uh, uh, when they happen and, and embrace them and know that, um, you know, you are doing things the right way. And so it's a matter of uh, just getting more of those moments uh, to, to really make yourself feel good about what's, what you're doing in the, in the big picture. Uh, but when you, when you have a few of those moments, uh, it definitely reinforces that, that, you know, you're doing the right things. 2021 is an interesting season, and, and I'm not even talking about post-pandemic or even the new tracks uh, that, that we've been to, that we're going to. It's an interesting season because it's almost where we, we have this car that we're racing this year that is no longer being developed, yet everybody is making faster. Um, yeah. How do you balance that? What's what's the philosophy with, 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 with racing here in 2021? With, with no further development on the car that just seems strange to me yeah you know i think that the development is relative and 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 what i mean by that is basically you're um you're in a box that's presented to you by nascar on some parts and pieces of the car and and the whole car really has has rules to it uh but there's still uh, in in a lot of cases a lot of area of opportunity to work and and so uh, while development this year may not be to the extent that it was in years past, we're still working. We're, we're still trying to make these things go fast. Um, all the while, we're trying to make, you know, sense of what 2022 and beyond looks like with that car. And um, our engineering resources are, are spread pretty thin right now, uh, working on all kinds of projects for, for now and for tomorrow. Yeah, lots of challenges for sure. Kevin, you are an engineer, uh, graduated from, uh, what was it, Virginia Tech? That's right. Yeah, Virginia Tech, there we go. I, I had a brain fade on that. Getting, as an engineer, getting the opportunity to work with a guy like Jack Roush, what was that like when you, when you first started to be able to tap into the mind of a guy like Jack Roush? Man, Jack, I don't know that anybody's ever been able to fully tap into his mind because <laughs> I don't, he's an interesting character, but I, I love him to death. He's, um, he's been, you know, probably the most influential person in my career uh, by a long shot. Um, he, he just has so many uh, good truths and, and good nuggets of wisdom to share, um, uh, not only as an engineer, but as, as a leader and a manager um as a person um you know he he kind of covers the whole spectrum of um of of things that, that that you know people should value and respect and learn from um i think over the years you know jack uh to some may have earned a a tough reputation as if he's a tough guy and and make no mistake about it jack's got some toughness in him for sure uh, but I've also been able to see the, um, uh, the, the human side of Jack and the compassionate side of Jack. And um, that's the part that, that many people don't get to see. But uh, I have a tremendous amount of respect for, uh, for both Jacks uh, because uh, he uh, 
he does this largely to engage with people and to help develop people's careers. Um, that's the reason I'm in my place. That's the reason many race car drivers have get, been given their opportunities. Um, and, and the same reason for, you know, many mechanics and fabricators and engineers at our company. Um, you know, Jack is here to give us all the opportunity uh, to do something really cool and special with our lives. And, and uh, I got a lot of respect for that. You said truths and nuggets of wisdom. Is there one or two that really stand out to you where it's, that's better? And, and, and sometimes nuggets of wisdom are, are logical, but yet none of us think about them. Is, is there something that just stands out specifically, Kevin? Uh, the one that's at the tip of my tongue right now that I actually shared with someone last night, um, uh, Jack has this phrase of uh, uh, it's better to have an act of commission versus an act of omission. Wow. <laughs> and so that one, uh, that one has definitely stuck with me uh, uh, over the years. Uh, basically, if you're going to go down, go down trying. And uh, uh, that that's a neat one. Uh, that uh, I like to share with some folks. That is awesome, man! I got, I'm, I'm gonna I'll be riding down the road thinking about that one next week, even you know. <laughs> That's pretty good. Nuggets yeah. of wisdom from Jack Roush. Neat stuff. It's interesting to me the hierarchy at Roush Fenway Racing because you're an engineer. You've got Jack, who's got that brilliant, brilliant mind, and equally as brilliant of mine, but in a different way is the, which this title cracks me up because I never had Jimmy Fennick as an executive vice president of anything. He is the least executive vice president type guy on the planet. Yet when you see his results in his performance and his hard school racing, he deserves to be guru of all of that stuff. Jimmy Fennick, likewise, what, what's it been like getting to tap into the wisdom and knowledge of Jimmy? Excuse me. Uh, Jimmy, um, he's a he's a Hall of Famer in this sport. Uh, he's not functionally yet, but he deserves to be um, no different than Jack. He, he has, you know, all these years of just incredible experience. And Jimmy uh, definitely sees the world from a, a point of view that, you know, to be frank, not all people see. And, and so that's what Jimmy, in my opinion, does for us and, and brings a lot of value to the table for us um, from his years of experience, from his, uh, quite frank, frankly, his, his just his gut. Um, he more often knows the right way than the wrong way. And so he can help us along the way if we, we are getting tripped up or, or not seeing things the right way or, or just, uh, you know, kind of getting stuck in our ways. Uh, Jimmy has a innate ability to come in and sort of rattle everybody's cages around a little bit and uh, uh, get us thinking about something, a problem differently. Um, there's been plenty of times that, that that has put us in a more productive path. And uh, I got a lot of respect for the man for that. Uh, Jimmy uh, has also done a very good job this year for us. at really just rallying the troops. And, uh, you know, that that's something that... Um, uh, Jimmy has earned uh, that ability uh, based on the level of respect that, that he's, he quite frankly, has earned over his career. Uh, there's not, not a person at Roush Fenway Racing that doesn't have just the utmost respect for Jimmy and, and what he's done. And so uh, when Jimmy talks, people listen. And, uh, and if Jimmy's uh, up front and, and center with the company and, and, uh, um, you know, basically laying it all out there and saying, here's where we're good and here's where we're bad and here's what uh, we need to do to get better, um, then I think people are, are paying attention and uh, there's that, you know, team unity that, that comes from those things that, uh, uh, quite frankly, um, only a guy like Jimmy is capable of pulling together. Jimmy is one of those guys as a pit road reporter. We actually, we actually motor racing now a little behind the scenes we actually, when a crew chief ignores us now, we call it being finned. Okay. Um, <laughs> Jimmy, and, and we used to do NASCAR performance live and Jimmy could not have been a better guest. He is a great guy, but when he is on that pit box, when he was calling a race as a crew chief, you had to literally 
hit him with your with your and, and we're asking questions like you know how's your car we, we're, we're trying to pass this along and this was before the era of a lot of pr people who were kind of intermediaries and yeah. literally you'd sit there and you'd be waving and you'd be doing everything and jimmy has this stoic focus and so we would laugh and say yeah i got fennec on that deal because uh and, and again it's no disrespect it was just such a hardcore focus and i, I think the thing that amazes me about jimmy is his career old time crew chiefs get in the business because they're old school crew chiefs, old time crew chiefs, but they ultimately get out of the business because they're old time crew chiefs. To me, it's amazing. And he's, he's relying on guys like you, Kevin, to, to take that old school mindset, but bring 2021 technology and engineering into it. That to me is an amazing skill set that most older crew chiefs don't have and older, older mechanics don't have. You know, Jimmy's strength is really about team building. Yeah. If, if we're honest about it, I mean, Jimmy, Jimmy knows a lot about race cars. Don't get me wrong. He, he, he probably has forgotten more than most of us will know. But at the end of the day, the thing that's timeless with Jimmy and what he, he excels in um, is, you know, bringing people together to work on a common goal and a common vision. And, uh, um, you know, most notably, that's, that's the role he's serving for us right now. Um, and he's doing a fantastic job with it. And so, um, yes, Jimmy does rely on me and he relies on our engineering staff and he relies on, you know, you know we'll call them modern day crew chiefs and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but that doesn't mean that, that Jimmy's uh, skill sets have diminished in, in the least bit. Uh, uh, what he, he does best, uh, he's doing very well for us right now. I'll say, love the progress being made over there. That is for sure. This weekend, the Cup Series rolls into Pocono for the double. Now, the double was originally scheduled. Then the pandemic hit, and we did multiple doubles. And now I think we're back to the originally scheduled double at Pocono. Kevin, as a, as a competition director for a team, what kind of challenges do two Cup races on a weekend like we have this weekend at Pocono bring for a team? Yeah, it's it's tough, and and I'll I'll just have to admit right out of the gate, it's not my favorite style of weekend, um, but it's part of what we do, and so we we have to do it. Um, and and you know the really the challenges from it uh, come down to if you have a pretty good first race, you're still going to have some you know small damage on the car, and the cars. You know, any anytime we race one of these cars, they're kind of used up at the end of it. Even if they're relatively clean by the end, the cars just um, they get sandblasted and they get abused um, just with normal wear and tear. And so then the challenge is taking that car from day one and flipping it around and getting it, you know, basically in the same condition it started the weekend with, uh, and getting getting it that way by the time race two comes around. And so. It makes for a long night um, there on Saturday night. Um, and then to add into that, if you do get damage and you know anything else, you, now you're you know doing body work in the garage and you're wrapping cars and, and all this stuff that um, is important. Don't get me wrong, you have to do it. Uh, but it kind of, to be honest, it takes focus away from uh, maybe the other things that, that you really need to be paying attention to to make the most out of day two. Uh, whether it be setup or strategy or things like that. So it's a very hectic weekend. <clears throat> and, um, uh, you know, fortunately, NASCAR gives us the opportunity to take, you know, a couple of additional people there to kind of manage that. Um, and that certainly helps. Uh, but it's, it's a stressful weekend, uh, really, from the checkered flag of race one all the way up till the, the green flag of race two. Uh, there's not a lot of time to, to breathe. Mm, fascinating stuff it really truly is that's for sure Kevin always like to get a little off track with people and a lot of guys out there are really open on social media they're climbing mountains or they're running kids you have none of that out there what is what is Kevin Kidd like when uh, when he walks out of Roush Fenway racing what are things you enjoy to do away from the racetrack Kevin you know family guy that's uh that's that's really where my interest is at got two young kids at the house uh got a, a loving wife and uh um, you know, I just try to spend as much time with them outside of work, uh, that I can, because, you know, the nature of our job is it, it takes so much from them. Uh, so I try to give as much as I can to them. We, we do all kinds of 
neat and fun things. Um, you know, we, uh, we like to travel. I travel for a living, but uh, even on my downtime, we travel. Um, so here in a couple of weeks, uh, in the off, off weeks here in, in the summer, uh, we decided that uh, sort of on a, on a whim uh, that we're going to load up in my motorhome and we're going to drive out to Colorado and back. And, uh, and that's just kind of the fun stuff that we do, uh, do as a family. We, we've gotten into bike riding a lot here lately. Um, I'm not really like these other bike riders in the garage area that uh, have these amazing machines that are all carbon fiber and, and uh, you know, built for speed. Uh, I got me a nice little uh, beach cruiser e-bike, uh, which helps me keep up with my kids. And we just kind of ride around the neighborhood and, and just enjoy time like that. So it's, uh, it's really about family for me. Priceless stuff, that is for sure. The the summer vacation, the uh, uh, the the maybe not the Griswolds, but uh, the uh, the kids' summer vacation. That sounds really That's neat. Right. Sounds like why why Colorado? Just as a, a, just a place you've always been curious about, or was there something specific there? Random. Uh, that, that's uh, yeah. The kids, we we enjoy taking them to new places and letting them see new things, and and they enjoy it as much as as we do. So. Uh, that was a, an area of the country that they had not been to yet. And, um, and, and quite frankly, my wife had not been out to Colorado either. I, I've been. Um, and so when we got to discussing it, we were like, well, shoot, let's just, uh, let's go out there. So uh, that's a little bit how we operate with uh, some of our adventures is um, purposefully, maybe not a whole lot of planning and, and preparation that goes into it. We just uh, sort of do it by the seat of our pants and that actually makes it more enjoyable. That's fascinating because I don't associate seat of the pants with engineer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah always, no. I don't operate seat of the pants in anything else I do, but but that part that that works. <laughs> I am sure. I am sure. One other thing, finally off the racetrack, you're from Tazewell, Virginia. Your family runs an auto parts entire business. Uh, your brother Michael did some racing. Is he still racing, or is that uh, is, is is that chapter over for him? You know, Michael has officially hung up the helmet. He uh, okay. <laughs> he, he was racing uh, pretty hard all, all the way up until about uh, two or three years ago. And then he kind of slowed down and just would, would do a few races a year. And, uh, you know, the reality is, uh, as we all get older, he's got kids that, that uh, have activities there. You know, his, he's got a daughter that's um, uh, really, really significantly into gymnastics. And they're doing that at, at a really high level. Uh, and so he spends a lot of his time driving all up and down the Eastern seaboard, chasing that. And, and, uh, uh, and that's been really neat and fun to watch, uh, uh how she progressed. Uh, and then all the while he's kind of the heir apparent to my dad's business. And, and so he's, uh, he, he's getting more and more active at, at managing that. And so his time for racing, uh, has been spread pretty thin. So he, he finally hung up the helmet a couple of years ago and, uh, he, he's off to the new things. Kid Tire and Auto Parts up in Tazewell, I think second location now as well. So the family business looks like it's going well. How neat was it though when he was racing and you were his crew chief? We talk about the fun factor in motorsports. That might very well have been as much fun as you guys. You might not have known it at the time. It might have been frustrated trying to get those cars faster, but that had to be a neat portion of life, Kevin, for you. Yeah, man. I look back on those days and and they were truly special for me. I didn't know how good we actually had it when we were doing it. Um, <laughs> but that was, you know, we were learning so much. We were, um, uh, we were learning about race cars. We were learning about life. Uh, we were learning about family and, um, all those lessons just stick with me to this day. And, um, I'll, I'll cherish them forever. For sure. Well, I have cherished this conversation. Been great to hang out with you here today on Crew Call. We appreciate the time. We're recording this. It's it's funny. We're recording this early morning, like 7.30 morning. This is this is engineer. This is crew chief time. We're when we're recording this. So I appreciate uh, getting this knocked out here in the morning. Wish you the best on the rest of your day. And I'm throughout, Kevin. But as always, thanks for the time. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on, Steve. Good talking to you. Director of competition for Roush Fenway Racing, Kevin Kidd, joining us here on Crew Call. <laughs> Sir, are you aware you were going 40 miles an hour? This is a residential area. Sure, but I'm on my lawnmower. Wait, am I getting a ticket? No, I've just never seen anyone top nine miles an hour on one of those bad boys. And mow their entire lawn in 30 seconds? What got into you? Well, it did fuel up at Sunoco this morning. At Sunoco, we know how to fuel peak performance. We've been doing it for American racing for over 50 years. Fuel your best. 
As we talked about with Kevin, it is the tricky triangle. Pocono Raceway for not one, but two races this weekend. And uh, the challenges, they are many for these teams. And Kevin, I think, laid out a lot of it off track. On track, well, it's Pocono. Three different turns, three different lengths straightaways. Nobody can ever figure out Pocono. Well, some guys have figured Pocono Raceway out. Those are the guys you see waving their arms in the air in victory lane. It is a challenge, the tricky triangle at Pocono this weekend. Motor Racing Network, we have five racing events from Pocono. Can't wait to get up there. My home track, I love my return trips to Pocono, and I can't wait to get up there. And we're going to do it five times. We start off on Friday evening, 6 o'clock Eastern time. It's the general tire, anywhere is possible, 200 for the Arkham Menard Series. We get up Saturday morning at 11.30 Eastern Time. It's the CRC Brake Clean 150 for the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. And then at 2 o'clock that afternoon, race number one, a 325-mile race for the Cup Series. Sunday morning, it's back at it at 11.30 Eastern Time. The Pocono Green 225, recycled by J.P. Mascaro and Sons, Xfinity Series race. And we wrap it all up at 2.30 on Sunday afternoon with the Explore the Pocono Mountains 350, the second race for the Cup Series up at Pocono Raceway. Motor Racing Network there all weekend long. You can go to mrn.com for the schedule, and they even have those handy reminders. So you know every time Motor Racing Network is on the air. I am so appreciative of Kevin Kidd getting up this morning. Well, I think uh, we got up to coming at his hours. I think he gets up every morning to do things at this time. And I appreciate my, how about this? I appreciate my producer, Julian Council, getting up at this hour in the morning and me dragging out of bed because I love having the chance to talk to guys like Kevin Kidd and sharing that here on Crew Call. We appreciate you joining us this week on Crew Call, presented by Hercules Tires, right on our strength.